Alright, socialists wouldn't like us quite as much. But we're still taxing them, it's not like we're cancelling the taxes outright, you know? Yeah, this is going to lower revenue and we're actually spending more money, but the whole hope is that we're going to improve the GDP. Is it going to improve it enough? Maybe not. If we bring it down to here, so we're going to go from uh, almost 7 billion to 4.5 billion. All the negative drain on our GDP would be gone. We also have fewer self employed people. Right? No, we'd actually have more self employed people. Right, because this is actually the high corporate income tax is currently a drain on the self employed. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to do this, and the reason is because I know there's an event that can trigger if you keep your corporate taxes too high for too long. Uh, they actually start to do tax avoidance, and that becomes a worse problem than just having lowered the tax in the first place. I'm going to do this. I might bankrupt our government. We'll see. Alright, so we've done that. What else? Oh, we have air pollution, which is going to be a problem for a really, really long time. It's mostly caused by... Well, yeah, so we have pollution, which is caused by poor air quality which is partially hurt by our GDP, which really our GDP is going to improve, so this is just going to get worse. And car usage and air travel, well, all those things are going to go up as our GDP increases. So what can we do to improve the air quality? Well, we can enact some new policies. For example, uh, car emission limits, right? Clean energy subsidies. Uh, pollution controls. These are all things we can do. Some of them might hurt the GDP, some might do other things. Uh, that's under economy. We can also um, put in a carbon tax, hybrid car. In, yeah, there's lots of things. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to implement pollution controls. I think that's important. Health, health, poor health brings down the economy. That's, that's one of the things that certain politicians in a certain country that doesn't actually have national health care doesn't realize it. It's not communism to have your people be healthy because healthy people work better and work harder and the economy improves. I know, I know, I know. Whatever. So we're going to bring in pollution controls. It's actually really cheap to put in. From our point of view, it's not very expensive. However, the capitalists hate it and it is a drain on the GDP. And that's the problem. Drains the GDP. Not much. I mean, we could bring it down to like here. We don't even see the sliver of GDP. We could bring it up maybe just, just to where it's literally, like, you know, is it really hurting that much? Whereas it makes environmentalists happy, and it really does impact the air quality a lot. Packs it more over here, but that, I don't think I want to hurt the GDP. I think I'm going to bring it to, yeah, just the barest little sliver. Technically it's there, but not much. But we'll improve the air quality, and it only costs us 14 million a turn. That's nothing. That's peanuts. Sounds good. Uh, we still have 10 political capitals. Is there anything else new that we can implement? Hmm. Well, one thing we could do is give out free bus passes to some people. Oh, I don't have quite enough political capital. Towards telecommunication. Like, all these things would bring down the number of cars on the road, which would again help the clean air thing. Um, I don't think I want to do subsidies. Small business grants, actually, hold on. Ooh. Can be expensive, can be a boost to the economy. It's tough, that's tough. Again, we're, we're cutting taxes while spending more money. I mean, it's a stimulus package, right? We, we're in a bad situation where we're accepting some debt now with the hope that it's gonna improve our economy and then allow us to pay off the debt later on. I'm gonna go with the small business grants. We'll see if we can fix that. Ooh, it's not super cheap greatly increases the, the self-employed more than anything else. I'm going to kind of leave it where it was. Alright, let's give it a try. Six months to implement, at least that's pretty fast. And we'll skip a turn and see what happens. Ah, tax evasion kicked in. Damn it! That's what I'm talking about, the corporate tax. Oh, and the income tax, bringing it up just above the, the line. I was hoping to keep it below this trigger, because now it's got to bring it all the way down here if we want this effect to go away. This is actually a big problem. New, we now need to appoint a UN ambassador, an un-ambassador. Oops, 
knocking things over. Our ambassador to the UN retires this year, and we need to name a successor as soon as possible. Much will be made of whether we appoint a hardliner who sticks up for the country, or someone more able to compromise. We've got Melanie as one option. A well-known Melanie is well known as a patriot who will fight tooth and claw. She has claws. Uh, to get our interests represented at the UN. Seen as a popular choice among patriotic and more conservative citizens, she is historically against foreign aid and a supporter of import tariffs. She is not popular internationally. All right, that's one option. We've also got Jesse, who is a popular figure on the international stage with a reputation for solving difficult problems through compromise and understanding. A true internationalist, he is popular with the liberals and socialists in our country, as well as foreign leaders. Well, we know who we're going to pick. We're, pay we're playing the liberal socialist game, so we're gonna take that route. Bam. Uh, economy still going well. Budget deficit still sucks. Um, we're not super popular. All right, so yeah, freaking tax evasion. How much is that hurting us? That is really unfortunate. So that's gonna hurt our um, our income considerably. Okay, so this is the progress of the next election. And financially, most of our money comes from actual income tax. Yeah, what can we do really? Our income is going up though, our GDP is improving. Despite the fact that we've got some tax evasion, we're still improving things. Our expenditure has grown, but not at the same rate. So I think we're improving things overall. We're still tech backwater, but finally things are starting to drop. Okay, that's good. We could probably use some stem cell research as well. Oh, it's not even expensive. Oh, it takes a lot of political capital. Oh, and the creationist thing. You know what, I'm not gonna spend any of my political capital. I'm gonna go and change these two things right away. It doesn't cost us anything, um, and it improves the situation a lot. Homelessness is dropping pretty quickly, probably because I'm thinking poverty is going down. Nope, poverty is flatlined. Hmm. Unemployment is going down. Okay, that, that's helping. And that's good, actually. We, we definitely need this to drop. That's good. I say that as this, like, an obvious thing. Oh, yeah, and you can mouse over these things and see how things are changing. Parents are actually on their way up right now um, because stuff. I don't know. But one thing you can do is you can start looking at these things and see how many people fit under the different categories. And the thing with this scenario is 73% of the population are socialists. Make socialists happy and you're in good shape. Now people belong to more than one group, right? Because 23% are religious, 24% are parents, 33% are drinkers, 20% are trade unionists, 22% capitalists. How about state employees? Only 26 or 29 percent, but um, their membership is going up, and their happiness is going up. So there's going to be more of these guys, and they're going to become that much more supportive. Um, commuters, we're probably going to piss them off at some point. Retired people are really unhappy. Well, they're getting a little better. Oh, it's the hospital overcrowding is a big, big problem. Also, the street gangs. Hospitals, I would like to do something about. I'm not sure we can do it right away, um, but we could spend some more money here if we had more money. It's dicey. Yeah, let, let's do the science things. We will uh, we'll just hit next turn. Hope nothing bad happens. Military whistleblower. He's left the army and spoken out to the media about drastic shortages and lack of basic training being provided to our military. Nash naturally, this is outraging the more patriotic sections of the media, and there is widespread concern throughout society that we have left our armed forces degenerate so badly. Ooh, and subliminal advertising. Uh, it's a series of techniques where adverts appeal to the subconscious mind, often used in TV adverts where quick images are flashed very briefly on screen, unknown to the viewer, but have a subconscious effect. Modern techniques also work with radio adverts. There have been calls to clarify the legal position of such methods. We can ban them or allow them. There's arguments for both sides. I think, again, with the sort of government we're playing with here, the, the, the sort of thing we're going for, we're going to ban that. Doesn't sound like the sort of thing we'd want to support. Good economy, our deficit's actually gone up, which is not good. We've lost some votes, that is also not good. We take a look at socialists. So they're happy because of the un and our ministers and little things like that. Some of these, hmm, yeah, this is gonna be tricky. All right, I'm gonna, let's get rid of creationism. 
takes a lot of political capital, but it's going to be worthwhile. Evolution only, we're going to decrease the number of religious people, which, you know, we are not going to really be appeasing anyway. Liberals will like us more, and it's going to stop hurting us technologically. Done and done. Speaking of the liberals, yeah, so they don't like us right now, but they're on their way uh, up. Membership is flat, but the happiness is going up, and it should continue to improve. By the way, we can also look at our cabinet here and take a look at different people with different levels of um, of loyalty and experience, and we can swap people out. Uh, the better they are, the more political capital they give us every turn. We can even go shopping for replacements, and each one of them have something that they're, they're friends with. Um, and that also ties into how much they like us as well. So we might start upsetting some of these people over time or, or different things like that. Um, and yeah, that's most of our political capital. We're going to see if we can improve stem cell research next turn. I probably should have done it earlier. Ah, minimum wage! At the moment, we don't have a min minimum wage. Minimum, minimum. And there is a proposal to introduce a limit below which it would be illegal to employ someone. This is designed to prevent people working for slave labor wage levels. We could introduce it. Um, there are far too many cases where small companies are employing people to work in the construction or food industry for appallingly low wages. By setting a minimum wage, we can ensure all working citizens have a good quality of life. On the other hand, this is free market interference at its very worst. Nobody is forcing people to work for these wages. They are the wages that the market has settled on. Making, making it illegal to pay these levels will just destroy jobs and hurt the smaller companies in particular. The government should not interfere in the market. And you know what? Whether there should be a minimum wage and where the minimum wage should be set is a very complex discussion that basically no two people could ever possibly agree on. I mean, theoretically, at any given point, you know, in, in time, in the economy, in this and this, there's probably some sort of sweet spot. But no one knows where the hell it is, and it probably changes every year. One year it should be higher, one year it should be lower. Anyway, but of course we're playing socialist, liberal, like, commie people, so clearly we're going to introduce minimum wage in this particular scenario. Vote's gone up a little bit. A budget deficit has dropped dramatically. Last turn we were at 16 billion deficit, now it's only six. Of course, we're still getting, you know, worse and worse in debt. But we're not as quickly, and this is important, this is a curve that's being shifted. That's why the gross domestic product improving considerably. Let's take a look at our finances and the history here. You can see our expenditures are still not really going up, but our GDP, our income is improving. It's almost even. We're almost to the point where we're going to start paying things back. Now, we do have a ma maximum government debt uh, allowed by the Constitution, $240 billion in debt. We're currently at $130 billion. God, we've got plenty of room. No problem. Um, yeah, so... All right, we did set those pollution controls. GDP is up. Tech backwater dropping like a rock. Awesome. Uh, we probably will still do the stem cell research. Again, it doesn't cost as much. Improves the GDP a little bit. Pisses off the religious and the conservatives. Yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe you know, it doesn't hurt the tech back, or it doesn't improve the tech backwater that much. We're probably going to be fine. Um, and I, I would like it here, but it does cost 25 political capital. You know what? There's probably something better we can do with that right now. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the air quality some more. All right? Because the asthma epidemic is as a result of the air quality. And it hurts productivity, hurts parents. Air quality leads to pollution. Uh, which all comes back to, yeah, the hospitals. Hospital overcrowding would be, well... We need to improve things. Do we spend more money here? Contagious disease. That hurts productivity and upsets everyone and hurts our lifespan. Okay. That's poverty. Now, it is going down ever so slowly because I think the poverty is going down. Not much. I'm trying to figure out the best place to attack this. Do we just spend more on the hospital? That's, that's a lot of money. We could spend a lot of money. On the other hand, I mean, it really fights the contagious diseases and the overcrowding. Can we go all the way up? Oh, that's, 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 that's a lot of money. It would really help, though. All right? Spending more on healthcare is, is pretty good. Can we help decrease poverty more? Is there a way we can attack that? Well, we've implemented the, the minimum... I can't say this word. We've implemented the minimum wage, which is going to help bring down poverty a little. Um, Ta tobacco tax is actually bad for them. 
The state schools is helping. Did we increase funding to state schools? We didn't. You know what? I'd rather do this because I think the literacy of the poor. So you know what? I'm. I think education. This is really the key to our platform. I'm gonna max this out for sure, for sure, for sure. It decreases unemployment directly because we've got more teachers and whatnot. Decreases poverty directly, and it's going to well make the poor people and socialists very happy. Of course there's going to be less and less poor people. But making the socialists happy is good for us. There's a lot of socialists in our country. Literacy is good. You know what, this, this sounds like our thing. Yes, max out schools. We're gonna absolutely do that. Try to decrease poverty. That uses up most of our political capital. We could see, you know, go shopping around for something on the space program. Um, monorail. We could, if we really wanted to decrease poverty, we could um, implement something like this, a disability benefit. You know what, I'm gonna do this because it's not something people usually think about. Disabilities are a very, very small minority of the population, but you've got people who are completely able to contribute to society if you give them just a little bit of stuff to help them overcome some basic barrier that's going on. I have no idea, no idea how much this is going to cost, but I want to put this in, it feels right. Oh, it's not even that expensive. Greatly increases your quality, that's good. And helps retired people, which does um, factor into um, poverty. P upsets the capitalists, but screw them, right? We hate capitalists anyway. Uh, makes retired people happier. And you know what, I'm gonna leave it basically yeah, in the middle there. Good. I don't know what equality does, where? Racial tension. Liberals are happy. Equality. Ooh, poor earnings, that's probably an important thing too. 